Chloe Joe Davis for Celebrity Catwalk and Girly Girl Army. Today we're here to talk about vegan parenting with an illustrious group of guests. We have to my left Eric Milano, a Emmy uh, what nominated, nominated sound nominated. engineer and father, Marisa Miller Wolfson, the writer and director of Veducated and a mother and Major King, who was born and raised vegan, and Cynthia King, who is the director and producer of Cynthia King Dance Studio in Brooklyn and the creator of the first ever vegan ballet slippers, which is very exciting and a good part of this conversation because vegan kids can wear your ballet slippers for class. So let's start off with what have you found to be the greatest thing about raising your children vegan and the most difficult thing? We should start, I suppose, from left to right. The greatest thing, I would say probably the greatest thing is that she doesn't seem to get sick very much. Um, I can count on one hand, she's almost four, my daughter, and on one hand when there, when there was like a serious illness, like that, you know, with fever and stuff like that, maybe two, three times. Um, so that's one of the things I can think of. Um, the greatest thing, what was the other half of the question? And, the, and some of the pitfall, oh. the more difficult things about raising a vegan kid. I don't really find anything that seems to be specific to being vegan other than, I guess, when you go to a birthday party, having to um, plan ahead for that. <clears throat> also at school, when they have a birthday party there, and sometimes they don't tell you that it's a birthday party, so you have to sort of like make sure you know uh, when all the other kids' birthdays are. Like in my calendar, I have every child in her class's <laughs> birthday so that I can, I know, I know when the birthday's coming up so I can, um, and do you grab, because what I've, t I'm the mother of three, I forgot to say that, and what right. I tend to do is bring a piece of cake and either pull the cheese off the pizza or bring my own piece. Is that right. the route that you've taken for the most part? I haven't had to deal with pizza yet, so I haven't done that, but oh. always, always go to, basically, you know, since I don't cook very often, we go to like um, Blossom Du Jour, pick up a cupcake and right. give it to her. I feel like maybe later on it may get more difficult because right now she couldn't care if it, if it looks like all the other kids' cakes right. or not. She's just like, ooh, cupcake, you know. Right. So, but later on I could see her being like, well, I want that one, you know. So that, I don't know if that's, maybe other people who have older children or you can, can, speak, speak, to can it. speak to that. Maybe we should just take a minute and speak to Cynthia. How, how did you handle that as um, the kids were growing up? Well, you know, I, there was really not, we really didn't have very many issues. Um, you know, I'll say the positive first, which, you know, I, I, that I, I'm very proud of my kids, and mostly because they are compassionate people. And, and we are vegan f for those reasons, for, um, you know, the health benefits are kind of nice. But, um, you know, for my kids to be aware of others and to have compassion for others, that's, that's the greatest gift, I think, that, you know, that we all have for, for being vegan and for um, to have kids that, you know, have that as part of their, you know, who they are, right. and it's important to them, and, and it's reflected in their actions, in their relationships, and, you know, I'm proud of that, and, you know, um, I, you know, I, you know, my memory's a little foggy because of, because uh, you're mom, you know, and, mom <laughs> right. and I have a business, and, but um, I, um, I don't think we had that many issues and problems. I, you know, there was times where they'd bring their own. There's definitely times where, you know, if we're out, like, traveling somewhere and we have to resort to going to, a, you know, a 7-Eleven for a bag of chips. I mean, that's not the way we like to eat. So there right. was times where we'd have to, you know, have a bag of peanuts, which it's still never, you know, I can't really remember any real issues and challenges. The, 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 the main complaint my kids had when they were younger was the smell of the cafeteria. We were public school kids, you know. Uh, the smell of the cafeteria, which probably is bad for everybody, not just vegan or vegetarian kids, right? And um, that it was that it grossed them out, that they were just grossed out. So, you know, I didn't really run into that many issues with, with parties and stuff. In our own parties, we just, you know, we served what we served and everybody was happy. It wasn't really the focus. Of, we're not like a big foodie family, I guess, either. So it wasn't really a big issue that I can remember. Maybe he's going to tell a different I story. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really remember ever eating at those, I know what you're talking about, those birthday parties that you have in the classroom, I remember back in like elementary school. Mm -hmm. And as of now, they still, like I still have professors in college that'll offer me candy on like <laughs> Valentine's Day. And I just got used to turning it down. And I guess, I guess it's, it's kind of like in the moment, 
if you turn it down and that's really all that there is to it. I, I often, I often yeah. equate it to having grown up myself Orthodox Jewish and kosher, mm -hmm. that my parents raised me according to their scruples and their ethos, mm -hmm. and that's just what most parents do. They mm -hmm. raise their kids in the church or mm -hmm. in wherever, you know, wherever they're from. Mm -hmm. And so I was raised according to mm -hmm. that, you know, moral standard, and I ate no, I've never had pork, mm -hmm. I've never had shellfish. So those mm -hmm. are things that didn't feel weird to me when mm -hmm. I when I was with my friends because I just I mean most mm -hmm. of my friends were kosher but mm -hmm. later in life even it, it wasn't something that felt awkward for me because it yeah. was just how I was raised. Yeah. So Marisa, what have you found to be? Well, I was I was just thinking the birthday party the social issue hasn't really played itself self out yet. Gabriel is only three years old, but um, what I'm finding I'm doing is uh, for parties and so forth is really texting or calling the mom ahead and saying, you know, what are you having? So I can bring whatever vegan version is. Today was the Valentine's Day party at Gabriel's school. And uh, so we made, uh, we made cookies because another mom said that she was gonna bring in cookies. And I asked her what kind of cookies. So we made some beautiful um, sugar cookies with icing made out of chickpea juice, mm -hmm. which Aquafaba. is so weird. Aquafaba, yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, it, it fluffed up and it was beautiful. Um, so he was happy as can be, and he knows, you know, he's got his food and everybody has their food. And that's not so strange right now because in schools they're hyper aware of allergies yeah. and food sensitivities. Mm -hmm. yeah. Every classroom has some kid who's allergic to eggs mm -hmm. or nuts or something. So, so the times have really changed. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's not how it used to be, you know, where it's not so weird if you're bringing your own food these days. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so moving forward, as you see your children growing up as vegans, do you think that naturally they are thrust into the activist role? Or do you think that they are just whoever they are and, by, and veganism just therefore becomes a, a sort of a default? Um, actually, we were, we were talking a little bit about this before we came in here. Um, and my little girl, Adia, is an intensely um, independent and rebel. She's kind of a rebel. And she's sort of like, she. I know this is true for all kids, but it seems especially true for her that when you tell her to do something, she wants to do the opposite. Mm -hmm. And so I, I foresee a little bit of drama or, you know, with her regarding this whole thing. So I can see her sort of eventually not ha becoming an activist or, or that kind of thing, but I think there's going to be a time when she wants to rebel against this. For and sure. so, um, Marisa like I, and I always joke that our children, just to spite us, will be meat eating Republicans. <laughs> right. 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 right, for sure. Right. So she already has, has come up to me and been like, Daddy, you know, I want to I try cow's milk. And I'm like, Well, sweetheart, you know, Daddy doesn't buy cow's milk. Um, so in our house, you know, we're not going to do it. <laughs> But you know, when you're when you're older, or when you're able to buy your own thing, you know that's going to be your choice. You know, and she she seems you know satisfied with that. Um. And it's interesting because I've noticed you know with the over four cent, and I'm sure you experienced this, mm -hmm. that now my eldest is in the questioning phase. And mommy, I do want to try one of those goldfish mm -hmm. crackers, which mm -hmm. for some reason the pretzel goldfishes <laughs> oh. are not vegan. Oh, they have good. whey in them, oh, so it's just yeah. like crazy things. So let's start a campaign. I did already, honey, <laughs> but we should keep writing, keep writing. Yeah. So I, so he really wanted to try one. He said, "Mommy, I know they're not vegan, and I really want to try mm -hmm. one." It was in the park one day, mm -hmm. and I said, "Then try one mm -hmm. because." For me, I found that the stringency doesn't yeah. Yeah. doesn't you know help us at all. Right. I think right. it helps us to to lean lean into things mm -hmm. and be compassionate, and be loving. And he is an a, a little activist. I mean, mm -hmm. he said to me the other night, his wish we do prayers before bed, and his prayer was that the world would be vegan mm -hmm. because he didn't want any animals to be hurt. Mm -hmm. So he's already by default knows so much. Mm -hmm. But the question then becomes, you know, where do you draw the line? Like, what happens if he says, "Mommy, let's go to Burger King." Mm -hmm. You know, we're lucky. We live in New York City, where there's over 350, mm -hmm. you know, vegan and vegetarian mm -hmm. and veg-friendly restaurants here. But what about the what about in the rest of the world? That is the challenge. But you know, my hometown, Evansville, Indiana, uh, ten years ago when I would go home, there was like nothing. And now a little vegan cafe opened up. Mm -hmm. There's a very vibrant uh, Vegans of Evansville Facebook group. Social media has really brought vegans together in a way that provides support for people who are living in the middle of nowhere, who don't have great options, and makes them feel like they have a sense of community. I mean, 
you know, I have a handful of vegan mom friends, but I know that I'm part of a revolution mm -hmm. in a way just because of being so connected. Mm -hmm. You know, I never see Cynthia, but I know what's going on mm -hmm. in Cynthia's life on Facebook <laughs> and so forth. And just knowing that we're part of this movement um, mm -hmm. is very exciting. Mm -hmm. Would you major, had, if, had you not been raised vegan, do you think you would have found veganism? Uh, well, I do think that I would because I'm drawn to uh, fighting different sorts of systems of oppression. I do other types of activism outside of veganism, and, and that's just what draws me, seeing people fight up against what's holding them down and fight up against what's holding other creatures down. And being drawn to that kind of gives me the feeling like I would be, I would be attached to fighting against oppression and fighting for animal rights, no matter how I was raised. Right. I think I would have found my way anyways. Towards activism. And when you were raising the children vegan, did you get any pushback ever from pediatricians? Um, I can't remember. I don't, you know, take what they say all that, you know, seriously. I think even I remember when uh, my other son was a baby, um, you know, you get that kind of pushback about nursing because the, um, you know, establishment once they give you a case of formula when you're leaving the hospital. So I've, I think I was used to that, you know, that I take what I take and I, you know, I don't take it all. So right. um, I don't remember really stressing about it if I did hear anything about it. Um, you know, I, re I more clearly remember that um, the pushing of formula, Interesting. Um, yeah. which is just anti-nursing basically, you know, anti-mother's right. milk. But, um, and that, you know, I'm just, I'm grateful that I had some kind of instincts that, you know, that my instincts were good to, to feed the kids the way they needed to be fed. But, um, um, yeah, no, I, I didn't have a fear. I mean, my kids were always healthy and I, um, you know, you just look at them. They sleep, they eat, they laugh, they do, you know, they, they, they look normal, <laughs> they, they yeah. act normal. So, you know, I, um, I wasn't really dependent on doctors telling me what was good or bad. Right, and sometimes yeah. when you do, I've you know just been nervous, yeah. just because it's my personality yeah, in general yeah, yeah. with with raising the kids. If I've yeah. had a moment, yeah. I've then gone back, and recently I did blood tests mm -hmm. for Panther, all of the blood tests, mm -hmm. and there was absolutely. I mean, you could not tell that he was even vegan. Right, right. So that just sort of like totally put me at rest. Right. And as long as I feel like you know we live in a generation, a world right now of. People just eat mac and cheese, and right. that's what kids eat, and right. they eat, you know, f you know, facsimiles. Right. Vegan kids eat facsimiles right. for the most part. They're, you know, vegan kids aren't necessarily always going to be drinking green juices all the time. Right. But I do find, and I don't tell me if you guys agree, that our kids do tend to dally more in vegetables and fruits that other kids wouldn't. Well, They're more. I, I have two uh, <laughs> very different eaters, completely different. We call my other son, we call him a French fry vegan. And he basically lives on French fries. He's, you know, he's about to hit college, and he's just never eaten. I don't think he's had a vegetable yet, you know. And that's French just fries the way, are vegetable. That, that's, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and then, you know, my other son is more, you know, health conscious and eats right. much differently. You know, much, <laughs> much more healthful. So, um, you know, and my husband is is a you know mock meat vegan. They eat like you know you smell bacon when you walk in my house. They all eat, we all kind of eat, have different tastes and different ways to go about it. But, you know, I think um, that's pretty normal. I mean, I don't know. In my house, that's normal. That, that so go, eat so growing up, what were your, like, what would you say your go-to meals were? For me were? as a child? No, growing up, oh, for raising them? the kids, rather. Um, you know, plain pasta. We did a lot of tofu. Um, I'm not much of a cook. I've always been very busy. We did, fake, you know, uh, nuggets from the freezer. You know, we, yeah. we did the... Pretty much, I mean, I was not a... The all-American diet, yeah, but the vegan of, version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Working a lot leather. of regular stuff, just regular stuff. That's why it didn't seem that weird, really. I mean, nuggets are, whatever they're made of, they look the same and everybody eats them. Right. When the kids' friends would come over, they would eat the nuggets. They didn't know what they were. <laughs> right. Sure. So. Gabriel mm -hmm. is picky, so mm -hmm. he fits into the, into the picky category. I was going to say that probably is my biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. um, but he's, but even within the picky category, um, he'll eat, you know... 20 different foods, um, but all of them are pretty healthy, mm. you know. So he'll eat, um, he does love green juice, and they love it when they get involved, mm. you know. Um, he just was so proud, I'm making green juice, I'm making green juice. <laughs> and he won't sit there and eat, okay, besides, 
cucumbers and carrots and um, tomatoes. He won't just eat vegetables. Mm -hmm. So I have to get creative, and I put them in pasta sauces. I do mac and cheese with butternut squash. I, um, I've even thrown kale um, into a, a muffin, you know, with blueberries. And, you know, you know I have to be creative, but um, his go-tos are all healthy, and his comfort foods are going to be healthy. So um, that gives me a lot of peace. Can you tell us a little bit about the inspiration for the book you're writing and a little bit about, a little teaser about the book coming out next sure. year? Sure. Well, the working title is The Vegetated Mama's Cookbook. Uh, again, working title that sort of, I don't know, Mama is kind of confined, it kind of doesn't encompass all the different kinds of families, so um, I'm thinking a little bit more about that. But um, the idea is to um, provide a resource, which there isn't one out there yet, for parents of babies, vegan babies, toddlers and young children, or not even vegan, but rather uh, people who um, don't really know how to give their kids more plants healthfully or deliciously. So I'm working with my, uh, with a collaborator, uh, talented chef Laura Delhauer, um, and um, we're making it happen. So That'll be great, of great use to many vegan mm -hmm. families in the world. I'm mm -hmm. sure many watching will be very excited to hear about that. And Eric, what would you say your daughter's go-to foods are? She's also a very picky eater, just as I was. Aren't all kids? Yeah, I mean. It seems that way. <laughs> but she's, she seems to have been got, just getting progressively pickier as she's gotten older. And it's become harder and harder for me to get her to eat vegetables. Um, and so, you know, sometimes I say, well, you can't have another, you know, uh, toast with butter or like, you know, until you've had some, some cucumber, you know. Right. And she, usually she goes for that. But part of me doesn't really want to sort of become that parent that's just like sort of forcing her. <clears throat> and I know like I ate so crappily as a child. Like mm -hmm. I just ate, you know, all I ate was meat. I really didn't eat b barely any vegetables and only like fast food. Like when, when we went to a restaurant, my parents had to go pick up Burger King first <laughs> and bring that to the restaurant because I wouldn't eat anything else. Oh I was God. the pickiest oh eater ever. Yeah, it was, it was so I don't know if she gets that from me, but she's incredibly picky too. And so, but because, you know, I've been getting more into a fruitarian lifestyle and just, or oil free, like very healthy lifestyle. So she's at least getting a little bit of that from me where she'll eat like a raw um, pepper every once in a while or a raw cucumber um, once in a while. But basically she mostly eats pasta, tofu. Um, what about lentils are big in my house. And that's Sometimes. also often, my, you know, people often say, isn't it expensive to raise your children mm. vegan? And I said, lentils are certainly cheaper mm. pound for pound than, mm. than beef any day mm. and twice on Sunday and so healthy and full of protein. Yes. So my kids are big on lentils. Mm. We do a lot of tofu. Mm. You know, apples with peanut butter mm. is a great snack yeah, go-to in our house. peanut butter. What Still. about supplementing? You know, there's a lot of talk of do we need supplementation in our diets? And so let's take adults out of the equation. Do you think that children need supplementation? We, we, they do. I mean, as far as the, the um, medical, uh, vegan um, medical establishment, if there is such a thing, they've actually um, written a formal letter. A bunch of them have written a formal letter urging the vegan community to supplement with B12. And for children, um, that is absolutely key for brain development and proper proper development. Do you think in addition? But, it, but it's but it's <laughs> it found in things. It's found in things that you wouldn't. No. You know, it's in your <laughs> breakfast cereal that you had today with with silk. You know, it's it's in stuff. Yeah. Um, it's in nutritional yeast. Um, it's in. And you let's know, just explain what nutritional yeast is okay. to those not watching, because that is such a huge staple of mm -hmm. my children's diet and my diet. So, mm -hmm. does anyone want to take it on? What it is? Sure. <laughs> what is it? We call it sprinkle. Yeah, we call it sprinkle and nooch. Yeah, sprinkle or nooch. Um, but it's um, it's fortified yeast that that's right. that is Dry. very high in B vitamins. Mm -hmm. And, and protein. And There's protein. like eight grams yeah. of protein in like... And it, what it is is it's a sprinkle, it's a sprinkly, sort of cheesy, cheesy yeah. tasting powder mm -hmm. that can be added to everything. It can thicken soups and stews. It can be put on top of toast with earth balance. Tofu. So, yeah, and tofu. So that's, yeah. Yeah, that's a big help. we sprinkle all the time. So what, but I use um, I use Dr. Furman's Pixie Bites. I was just going to ask there are you. Some, there are some... Nutrients to watch out for in a vegan diet, um, no doubt. I mean, B12 is the most important one, and that's the only one that our pediatrician has ever brought up. And we just nipped that in the bud and we said, well, he gets his Pixie Bites, which is a little powder, which we mix with uh, water, and he, that's his water once a day. Um, but, uh, and my kids do the animal parade. They do that. 
Right. And I also do the green, the greens, which I find to be amazing. I mean, these are things that non-vegan parents would care about and want to know about as well. Sure. And, of, and oftentimes they ask me how my kids get their probiotics, and I say, my kids love to drink kombucha. That's mm -hmm. their version of soda. Mm -hmm. so. we, have, we give Gabriel a probiotic. He can't say ours, so he says plobiotic. <laughs> we love he that. always asks for his plobiotic, which is delicious. <laughs> tastes like strawberries. Um, but he also gets a DHA, DHA purity. Um, I think kids, parents of children who don't like fish could benefit from that because um, while um, ALA is found in things like hemp seeds and flax seeds and um, you know, other, other fruits and vegetables, the body um, has to convert it to DHA. So DHA you can get directly from microalgae, which is um, other kids get it from fish, but vegan kids get it from microalgae, which is where the fish get it. Which so, is seaweed? Which is seaweed, right. yeah, yeah, basically seaweed. Um, and it's in a little dropper. And um, So do you think that if kids eat those little seaweed packs, they need the DHA supplements as I well? I think they do, because that's not, I mean, that those packs have a lot of ALA, but they don't have a lot of, um, I mean, have a lot of a vitamin A, they don't have a lot of DHA. No, but I, th I think, you know, but then I've also heard people say, look at India, they've had this, they've had, you know, how many centuries of people raising kids, mm -hmm. vegetarian, mm -hmm. who don't eat fish, and don't take DHA, mm -hmm. you know? So, and, you know. I think it's also interesting looking at the panel here. We all come from completely different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. I'm from an Orthodox mm -hmm. Jewish New York City family. You know, you can each say where you're from and what you're <laughs> from, but the point is, is that we're all raised in our deeply, like, entrenched in our traditions, and we all need to break free of them, and so we're creating new traditions with our children. So things like, for me, making vegan challah with my kids, mm -hmm. Um, you know, those are the kind of things where we, we build new traditions with our families. Can I just say about nutrition, um, I have been a parent who paid absolutely no attention at all to nutrition. My, my own, my, or anybody in my family, I just, I honestly was focused on other things. I was completely focused on other things and it was like, are you hungry? Now you're not hungry after you eat. And that's, my, that's and I felt like my job was, always was done. Good. No matter what it was they were eating, whether it was plain pasta with, you know, whatever it was, I only really thought about the, them not being hungry anymore. I never paid attention to nutrition. I, even now when people say, where do you get your stuff? I'm like, I just don't even pay attention to it. I never think about it. I eat a balanced, I mean, for myself, I eat a variety. That's basically what I think. But even, but the kids didn't even eat a variety. They ate pretty much the same thing every day, but I never <laughs> gave it any thought. I'm sorry to tell you, I just didn't. I just had other things on my plate. I worked, my husband was a cop for 27 years. We worked crazy hours. We were shuffling the kids back and forth, tag team parenting constantly. Are they fed? Yes, they're fed. I didn't even know what they were fed half the time. And he didn't know what I fed them. It was just like, they're not hungry, they're in some bed. That's the kind of lifestyle and it's a good that way we to look did. At it. And you know, so I, because we don't want to turn people off to, yeah, you know, I, raising their kids in a more plant-based way without freaking out that they're yeah, not going to get mean, everything, especially since now foods are so fortified. Yeah. And also, like a blue-collar family, like we weren't spending copious amounts of money on, any, you know, on anything. Right. We were, it was not hard um, financially to, to feed everybody. It wasn't complicated. I hardly cooked. Nobody cooked. We prepared. We did the fast food thing, vegan style, and. You know, it's just another version of it. I really honestly never, I don't think I ever looked at like a, a label except for to see if it had vegan ingredients. I never, I mean, maybe that's not the great, I'm not saying that's the greatest thing. I'm just saying that was my experience. And I just. He's alive, look. And he's alive. <laughs> he's more than alive. <laughs> and my other son is alive and well too, nice, tall and mm -hmm. healthy. And you know, I don't know that, um, I mean, I think a lot of v veganism, you know, the part that has to do with the food, there's definitely a lot of different focuses and people that, you know, they'll come up with different reasons to not be vegan. Like, well, where do you get this and where do you get that? And, you know, for me, I, I had a hard time answering. Say that mm -hmm. I also come from basically the same philosophy because when, when I first, you know, was deciding that, or not deciding, I knew that I was raising a vegan child, I was a little bit nervous and I was reading up, you know, I'm, I'm a scientist by training, even though now I'm in audio, but so I'm very, very into science and reading up on studies. And so I was sort of like, reading all the things about what humans need to eat, and I became sort of overwhelmed, and I was just like, really, is this, is this really true? And very healthy, an athlete. And I was like, you know what, at some point, I just sort of like, eh, let it all go, and just mm -hmm. like, I'm just gonna feed her whatever mm -hmm. we feel like feed. I just don't have the energy, mm -hmm. and that may sound irresponsible, mm -hmm. 
but it actually, I mean, the kid is bouncing off the walls, <laughs> you know, she has so much energy, she's in the 100th percentile of everything, um, you know, she, she seems fine. The one thing that I do supplement her with is B12, because that one, the science has shown that you really do need to be careful with. The thing is that we need so little of it. We, we need such a, a, a microscopic amount of it. And also, it takes about up to three years to, or even more for it to, once you have enough for it to actually be depleted. So we need a, an incredible small amount of it, but it's critically important. It, it can cause you know, brain issues if you don't have enough. So I do give her a, a B12 supplement. But other than that, I don't give her anything. And soy is actually completely filled with iron and calcium, and she has no issues. So, so that so let's let's well, go. Well, Sorry. can I just add that there yeah. actually there isn't a whole lot of science on vegan children. I mean, there's not the bodies of science because who's paying for that? Who's going to pay for that? <laughs> you know, right? But but the the science that does exist supports it. Mm -hmm. So this is not this mm -hmm. is not foraying into the great right. unknown. Right. The science does mm -hmm. say that it's helpful for all life stages mm -hmm. from, you know, mm -hmm. pregnancy, the American Academy, the American, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly, the Academy American of Dietetic Association said that it's, um, it has health benefits. And the fact, Academy of Pediatrics mm -hmm. said that as well. And the American mm -hmm. Academy, okay, Pediatrics. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there was a study on some kids in that hippie commune, the farm, in the mm -hmm. 70s or something, and the one thing they came out with was they were a little low in vitamin D. Well, guess what? We're all low in mm -hmm. vitamin D. Right. It, you know, it <laughs> had nothing dwellers, to do right? with vegan or not, right. um, it, right. really. So, and that's something that 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 you know is in Gabriel's little multi. Um, so, anyway, the science that does exist supports this. Absolutely. I mean, it supports it that that mm -hmm. all humans. I mean, like, I'm, uh, I've been reading the the book by Dr. Michael Greger called "How Not How to Not Die," I believe is what it's called, <laughs> and he talks about how the top ten you know things that that people die from are all either prevented or even reversed by eating a vegan diet. Mm -hmm. It's like, hello. And know. that's what we're going to take on in the next uh, <laughs> part of this uh, conversation. Mm -hmm. So we'll wrap up for now and we'll be back to talk more about vegan parenting on Celebrity Catwalk with Chloe Jo Davis from Girly Girl Army.